four of our at home for home starts and um uh thank you so much for saying yes uh have you have you got it have you got the robin with you have you have. got the robin yeah. <laughs> I feel really sorry for Jane sometimes. So good evening, everyone. Welcome. Thank you for tuning in. Um, uh, I feel sorry for Jane sometimes because she gets labelled with this Robin thing. The Robin lady. The Robin lady. Because <laughs> that's the first thing we made. That's when we met. Yeah. And we've done all sorts of other things since then, including the Christmas waistcoat where I went completely berserk and overexcited. <laughs> that was and so no, one, no one was prepared to tell me that it was just the ugliest thing they'd ever seen. <laughs> Did you ever wear it? <laughs> I did, because I just loved it. Yeah. I just, I was, and I think that's oh, kind so of the joy fun. of crafting is sometimes when you make something yourself, you you can't see it for what it truly is. Yeah, but sometimes we just chop stuff up and we just really enjoy, we've been hacking up loads of clothes that were due to go to the charity shop because we can't go to the charity yeah. shop. Yes. And we're just yeah. making them into other things. And like, that's, sometimes it really is the joy of making. I, I, you know, it doesn't Jane, matter. <laughs> but when I was doing, um, when I was doing that lockdown craft show that we did at the beginning of the lockdown, yeah. it was quite intense because there was no, there wasn't the interaction with the people that I'm used to seeing. As you know, because we've worked together a lot, I I sit there and then someone sits next to me, and I I'm so lucky to get all this guidance. But I was on my own. And then, so I had it's two crazy. camera people, no director in the room, no sound man, no kind of art team or all the people where I can look at their faces and if they're going, mm, I know that perhaps I'm doing it wrong. And um, so uh, um, I was, it was a bit tricky, I have to say. And and so um, I know the feeling that you, you, you just, you know, you just kind of, you get on with it. Now it, we, so, so what I should explain to all our, our viewers and the people who have logged in on YouTube um, is that Jane and I are chatting. So all I can see is Jane and all you can see is me. But down the right hand side, I have a lovely little chat box and I can read everyone's comments. If you want to log on to the chat and ask Jane a question, ask me a question. Um, and uh, and we've got a our first two hellos, which is say hi to Will, Carol, Alicia and Teresa. So hello to all of you. And then Will Meany, who, who logged in yesterday from Cleveland, Ohio, is back. Oh, cool. uh, and, uh, <laughs> which is lovely. And um, I've got Crafty Kate, says, hello, Kirsty and Jane. Loving this live chat. So excited to get some tips. Well, Jane is your girl for tips. She's absolutely brilliant. So, Jane, I've been going on and on, but just explain, how, how do you describe yourself? Okay. Um, yeah, I'm still trying to work that out, but I'm kind of, a textile experimenter, I suppose. I really, really love textile techniques and um, sort of um, making happy accidents with them, kind of originating designs, I suppose. So I spent the last 20 years making sample designs using loads of different techniques, patchwork, needle felting, all kinds of things, and um, selling them to fashion and interiors as ideas. But then also alongside that, I wrote six craft books on lots of different things, one of them being needle felting, which was why your team got hold of me and were like, yep. you do yep. needle felting. Can you teach Kirsty how to make a robin? And I was initially, I was like, no, I don't make animals. I make fabrics. <laughs> but then what happened was I was sort of thinking on the phone and I was like, hang on. And I'd done a 10 week course around this book that I'd written on needle felting. And the needle felting book had eight chapters and I had two more of these, um, I was going to say episodes. No, see, I've lost all the vocabulary in lockdown um, mm -hmm. of, of the lessons to do. And so I sort of invented this kind of bird and we made these kind of needle felted birds and I hadn't made them right. So <laughs> here there it is. There he is, look. So um, obviously hadn't made them right. I hadn't made them in the traditional way of, you know, the yeah. single needle and kind of sculpting them. I'd made them in my way. So I'd used two pieces of fabric. So it was kind of 2D and then kind of put them together. It was the cheats way. So um, so they were really quick to make, weren't they? they so, were um, make. so I sort of went, oh, hang on. No, I can teach Kirsty how to make a robin. So, yeah. And then so many people still remember it. I know it was eight years ago. I know, and 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 it's extraordinary because it it 
it was one of those things that just people love the Robin. Everybody remembers the Robin and they can't even tell me which show it was or when it was, or, <laughs> you know, it's just like, I remember the Robin and, uh, and needle felting, which I didn't know anything about before I met you. And which is the case for so many crafts. And I have this thing where I always say, everyone's got a craft. There's no such thing as someone who can't do anything. You just have to find what, what your craft is. And I tell you, I can't engrave stone. And I know that to be a fact. Neither can I knit or crochet. Although I, I, I've I come to a really interesting conclusion about the knitting. I don't which, crochet either. <laughs> but I recently um, went to... Um, uh, to be a judge on behalf of the Guinness Book of Records okay, to judge okay. the world's longest knitted bunting. Yes, I saw that, I remember that. Yeah. A, a extraordinary, absolutely extraordinary. And I realized the thing about knitting is that you have to practice because at first it's really scruffy. Mm. And if it's you're- It's all about the tension, isn't it? Yeah. And, yeah. Which I was always- Yeah. <laughs> <Do that. laughs> if you're kind of neat freak, which I am a little bit, oh. um, and your first attempts are going to be scruffy because with the robin, your first attempt will be rough-ish, but your second attempt will be noticeably better. And by the third or fourth attempt, you've got a flock. Whereas mm -hmm. with knitting, it's it's not like that. No, it's um, really quick to learn. I remember teaching it at your the first handmade festival to like a hundred people. That was so scary. And literally after twenty minutes, somebody went, "I've done it!" Put their hands up. It was wonderful. It's, it's fantastic. It's so satisfying. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, we've got more uh, messages. We've got Will. Uh, so Will Meany, the one oh. from Kent, I, uh, <laughs> I, uh, he says he loves the Robin. He's a huge oh. fan. <laughs> uh, uh, Granny Caroline in Tembe and Joan in Coventry are listening in. And uh, uh, someone here says, Jane, I really remember that. Actually, wow. Um, and Crafty Kate, I'm going to try and make a mug. Yeah. And she says, a moth, as I love the taxidermy style of them. There's a whole, there's a, what's it called? There's, it's not called taxidermy, it's called sort of faux tax. There's something yes. where it's not cruel and they kind of... Where it's not cruel, yes, she says that. She says that, less cruel. Yeah. Um, Okie doke. And then uh, Katrina Vernon. Hi, Kirsty. I've watched your shows, especially Christmas, which helped me through dialysis and then recovery after kidney transplant and pregnancy and lockdown. And I want to open my own Christmas shop. Do you know what? I don't understand why we don't have more Christmas shops in the UK. We've got one in Broadway near here. There's a Christmas. Yeah. I don't know whether it's still open. Well, it's not open now, obviously. But yeah, we did have one in Honiton for a long time. And I'm, I'm going to have to check when the shops reopen on the 15th, whether the Christmas shop will reopen. But, but they don't have as many in the UK as you do in other countries. I went to... There's a place in Norway, which is the sort of centre of all things Christmassy, yeah, and it's yeah. a Christmas town. Not, oh, I don't, oh don't it's, it's, someone I said it's do. called <laughs> Fodermy. Fodermy. Mm. The, the, yeah. So anyway, in Norway, they literally have a Christmas town. Um, Jane, yes. so as well as talking craft, and I, oh, oh, I didn't, I didn't put my phone on silence. <laughs> Very live, this. It's not like the telly. You can't edit out that you failed to put your phone on silence. Um, as well as talking all things craft, are you going to make something this evening? Um, no, but I'm going to show you other things that I do with needle felting. I Great, thought you don't. That's it fantastic. might be quite interesting to sort of show no. you some other things and some other things that you can do. Because I, I didn't want to needle felt here. No, it, no, you're right, because it's, it's a bit... It's a bit, yeah, yeah. A bit you know, King Zena, I think she couldn't really kind of show you what she was no, doing under her machine. So I, yes. I thought I'd give some inspirational yeah. ideas. It, inspiration is brilliant yeah uh, but but um what i was going to say also is that you are on lockdown with your your two yeah. you are i know how old one of them is because you were pregnant the first time yeah. we met. so harris is eight and yeah. Eva is ten yeah. and i'm quite excited to be able to talk to you this evening because i was like to their dad can you have them this evening <laughs> so <laughs> overnight are you working because he's a nurse and i kind of help cross my fingers and hope that his shifts worked and he was like no yeah that's fine I can and um but yeah I can speak to you without interruption <laughs> which is great <laughs> um, your experience is as so you're someone who usually works from home yeah 
but your two children who are 10 and 8 are currently on lockdown with you. Yeah. Your Their father, your former partner, is a nurse, so obviously yeah. has shift work. And yeah. initially there were some complications about how and when to see him and how best. Well, it... I was just really anxious at the beginning. I was like, I think just sort of terrified of the whole thing. And I was like, well, we should do what's best. And, you know, maybe you sh because we don't live together, you should sort of carry on working. And But then everyone... we the kids just really missed him he really missed the kids it was just so stressful that we just decided to go back to how we normally do it and sort of co-parent and go between the houses which the government said we could do so yes but really you know it's we we're so blessed because we live in the middle of nowhere we've got a field out the front they've kind of sort of fashioned some kind of park out of bits of rope from trees and things like that and of course I've got this studio here at home so you know they can play and there's been a lot of craft homeschooling, <laughs> not so much maths and English, but you know, <laughs> but they can just use whatever from here. Although I do find, you know, all these fabrics, because this is all like upcycled fabrics, but I'll quite often pull a fabric out and then and kind of look at it and there's a hole in the middle of it where somebody's like chopped out a rectangle. <laughs> you know, but yeah, it's I mean, my heart absolutely goes out to those single parents that don't aren't having any kind of break normally you know in this situation in lockdown it must be just awful it's, it is and, awful you know. and it's 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 one of the things that Homestar are really highlighting with this COVID-19 emergency fund and the reason that you've so kindly given us this hour of your time and we're chatting which is a real treat for me I have to say mm -hmm. um is because uh we're, we're really trying to raise awareness of the work that Homestart do. And I think raise awareness of the importance at this particular time to donate to the COVID emergency fund, because what they're doing, apart from, obviously there's the work of the, the volunteers. And at times like this, we need more volunteers and, and more help. But also there's a lot of buying nappies and baby food and food and activities and all those things which actually cost money which are being dropped off on those isolated families because if you're already a vulnerable family if someone is suffering from postnatal depression if they're struggling with a disabled child if they're struggling with the multiple birth if they're struggling with a partner in the forces a partner who perhaps is in prison or something where they feel isolated and cut off from their community it's very hard to 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 get out. I mean, my sister's got a new baby. Yeah. She had a baby on the 25th of April. She's got an absolutely devoted husband. I live an hour away, so if there was an emergency, mm -hmm. I would be, you know, be able to drop stuff off. But, you know, it, I cannot imagine if someone was doing that in a more difficult situation. It would be really, really, really hard. Yeah. Um, so have you been sort of, um, have you been sort of, philosophical about the homeschooling thing and thinking I can they can learn in other ways definitely yeah I mean it's it helps that I teach a lot of workshops so I'm used to sort of teaching and finding creative ways of teaching I suppose you know we kind of like sort of bring maths into cooking and like even making slime they were like well we've only got this much glue left to make some slime and I was like well that means you're gonna have to like knock all the other ingredients down proportionally. And they were like, oh, <laughs> I was like, you reckon you can do that? You know, and just somebody, you know, we were just putting some flat flour, uh, make, making making a cake and um, and they forgot to put the scales on. And I was like, well, how much, is it? you know, and just how much is one teaspoon worth or how much is a table? Just trying to get it like that. We have done some of the homework, but I quite often look at it and then reframe it. So if they've got to do like, Eva had to do a book review and I was like oh well we'll scrap that book we'll do it on Alex Ryder <laughs> yes that's, you know that's, so yeah so that is that's really interesting Jane because it's that's about confidence and sometimes so. that's something that uh parents can have a real problem with um is having the confidence to say well actually this is maths and that is reading and just because it's not what's been set or just because it's not but it is about that I mean uh, it's a very about knowing them where to use it isn't it, it, it yeah. you will use this because look it's coming in here now you know when we're measuring up sewing or when we're doing because they'll, they'll often go when the hell when are we going to use this and you're like we're here right now yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. Um, so we've got a few more messages. Oh, Will says, can we have a Halloween special? Do you know what? I long to do a Halloween special. Wow. I really, I don't, I, I don't think it'll happen this year because at the moment, obviously, we are struggling to work out the Christmas show. There will be a Christmas show, partly because one of the episodes I filmed in January. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to have to have a thing across the, the, the screen saying this was filmed in January 2020, 20, before <laughs> social distancing. Um, but we are going to work out how to do the Christmas show in the in with the new protocols and the new way of doing things and we, we're going to crack it and it's going to be better and bigger and Christmassy than ever but I don't think this is the year that we'll be allowed to do a Halloween in the Cirques but Halloween would be so much fun <laughs> great so thank you Will for that um and Teresa says I'm so excited to be able to get some ideas and what I can do with my children but we don't have a lot of money ah now Jane you are the girl for this because you are the most canny with that kind of thing um so far away well we we literally have used the recycling everything in the recycling box so actually we should have eva here really because she's amazing <laughs> at this kind of stuff um but she she watches loads of five minute crafts on youtube and sort of hacks she's so into hacks and she goes mommy we got this this and this and i'm like we're going to the recycling bin and find bits. And we've been using like the fabric on, well, not that we need to do this because we've got so much fabric here, but you can use the fabric on um, from clothes that you're kind of, you know, if you, they're worn out or whatever, you can cut those up. You know, there's so much, it was like when you were saying to Zena about knicker elastic, I love that. Yes. You know, just, there's so much elastic in things, but you have to just sort of think a bit out of the box and kind of find it. You do. You just don't throw anything away that yeah. uh, might, you know, look at it before you throw away. Mine it for things like buttons, zips, exactly. elastic. If you can't I alter it. I'll show you something that she made, actually, from an yeah. old hula hoop. She said I was allowed to show you. Um, this is Eva making, um, this was a hula hoop, a curtain ring in the middle lots of sort of string and wool and um and then we just kind of put lots of ri old ribbons and bits and then pom-poms and pom-poms and so, like, so pom -pom, so, pom -pom, so i had this whole thing with the pom-pom maker a few years ago and i do think the pom-pom maker is a brilliant invention but also you can there's a new way of doing it with cardboard which is much easier than the old yeah. way oh, yeah wow. And I'm going to have to, it's a kind of T shape and I'm going to have, we did it on the craft show and I was really blown away because do you remember the old cardboard way um, oh, yeah. was really arduous, but there's a new cardboard way, which is really easy. And I will, I will find a link to it and I will send it to Homestar and get them to put it up on their YouTube because it, it's a really, you'd find it if you just sort of Googled it on YouTube. Like, so yeah, it's it's, not, it's some... not that thing where you have to cut out a circle no. and then Round and round and round. It's exactly. much yeah. So, so basically, that's beautiful. By the way, it's a sort of dream catcher. Come, you know. Re I mean, it's everything, really. Um, I mean, I, my I friend think... Rachel, she she makes yarn out of t-shirts. Yeah. You know, she just kind of cuts, keeps. You can you can make yarn out of so many things. Old clothes. You yeah. know, there's yeah. loads of ways yeah. to do things. It's just bag tugging is a brilliant one. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, now, we've got some, um, uh, Katrina Vernon is saying, I think forest schools are brilliant. I couldn't agree with you more, Katrina. And then 2020 True Colours. My sister, Pauline, works with sick children. She's just told me she's cutting the legs off her jeans to make shorts and a matching face covering. There we are. That is fab. That is absolutely fab. My kids are constantly chopping the legs off their trousers because they're like, once they grow out their trousers and the legs are too short, they just hack them off. Yeah. They even hack t-shirts off to that lovely length of t-shirt, you know, that length, that yeah. kind of, she does that a lot and just yeah. chops them off. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. <laughs> Lots yes. of I definitely think I'm a great one for a pair of pinking shears. I think you can, yeah. you can do a pair of pinking shears. Yeah. Um, okay, hold on. Oh, look, the messages are coming thick and fast, Jane. So, um, <laughs> June sent us a picture on Twitter using at, oh, there's a hashtag 
Of course there's a hashtag. Of course there's a hashtag. June sent a picture using hashtag at home with Homestart of a hand woven scarf. It's amazing. So I, I'm going to have a look at that afterwards. Yeah. I and, um, uh, Katrina says, will I release more books? Ah, oh, therein lies a tale, Katrina. I'm going to be completely honest because before we came on, um, we, we had a bit of a chat, didn't we, Jane? And we were talking about various subjects and I was saying, you know, it's all better to tell the truth. The thing about books is they're like homework, aren't they, Jane? Until you've done them, you're never <laughs> free from them. And, and, and they do hang over you. So once you say you're going to do a book, whatever you do in your other work, whatever commitments you have, there's always this little bubble in your head, which is the book. <laughs> um, I love books, though. They, they are wonderful. They are wonderful. They are wonderful. And I'm always torn between loving the finished product, adoring the finished product, and hating the process. Um, I'm doing a really weird thing at the moment. I'm writing online courses. And I said to somebody the other day, it's like writing a visual book. It's, it's kind of nicer in a way, because I just, I do like to talk. Rather, I'm very slow typer. <laughs> so I'm just like showing with my hands and talking. It's actually like great. And I never thought of it as a book, but it is. It's kind of like a visual book. It is like a visual book. Now, Katrina has said another thing. Uh, which is interesting. She says, I wish I could enter your Christmas competition, but shielding for loads of time. Um, do you know what? I, I'm going to look into that, Katrina. I'm going to look into what we're going to do about people who want to uh, go into the competitions but can't because they're shielding. Because I'm sure, you know, the great thing about the Christmas show is that it has a real can-do feel to it. We don't talk about it a lot on the show, but we've had loads of consist contestants, consistents, who <laughs> have um, particular needs or issues or particular vulnerabilities, and they've managed to get through. Y you know, they have managed to get through. We had someone last year who had a, a condition whereby suddenly she would faint. And I, 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 mean, I don't want to say which competition she was in because that would give it away. But it was one where everyone was making something to time, which was quite fragile. So there was obviously a risk that she would faint the wrong way and take out one of the competitors' <laughs> creations. But you know what? We managed it. So, Katrina, I'm sure we can find a way, if not to enter the competitions, to at least show the work of people who are at home shielding. So, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to look into that. If anyone can find a way, Kirsty, you will. <laughs> You managed a whole craft show in lockdown. Well, yeah. You can do it. <laughs> there was a lot of them, yeah. yeah. It's because of this peculiar house, which does have quite a few loos. Um, uh, I, Katrina says, I bought a loom after watching your show and loved it. And Teresa says, I'd love to see upcycle things. And now we have Ali. I've just sent in a picture of a couple of things. I needle felted. Pictures are coming. Up. Um, and then rash me who, um, now there are loads of people called Rashmi, but the, it might be a Rashmi that I know, says uh, lockdown has really re re revived the art of all crafts, thanks to you. You really inspire me. Well, if that's the Rashmi that I know, she really inspires me because Rashmi makes a lot of the dresses that I wear. She's very, very talented dressmaker. Uh, um, she's also been making the most beautiful scrubs absolutely beautiful with these details little rainbows little hearts embroidered bits sort of little sort of you know your regular scrubs and then one shoulder that's just with a different fabric or something really interesting um Susie says we love Jane what an inspirational lady yep this is why we keep on coming back to Jane she was on my list <laughs> I made a list of my top people that I wanted to do this week and everyone said yes so cool. which is great and yeah. I think part of that saying yes is that did you know about Homestart before yes you did yes. yeah yeah and how, wh when did you first learn about Homestart when it was pretty tricky when I was single parenting when the kids were young you know just reaching out not feeling isolated you know I, mean, I don't feel isolated I've got a wonderful family you know and but but it's hard you know just navigating everything and and I did glean lots of information from lots of different places and I think you do. You sort of 
have to be a bit resourceful and find ways to sort of manage when things yeah. don't go quite as you thought they were going to go. But yeah, and I just think what they do is amazing. You know, I, as I say, I'm really blessed, but I can so see how things, well, I, I can't, I'm not in it, but I can, you know, I can sort yeah. of, you know. It is, I remember once I was doing a carol service for Homestar and I had just gone to, um, my sister had just had her second baby and it was the first child to be born since my mother's death. And so it was very important that I was there. And um, I went up to Edinburgh. She was, she was due to be induced on the Monday. And so I booked to go on the sleeper train on the Tuesday night thinking that definitely the baby would have come by the Wednesday. So I, I got on the sleeper train. Uh, uh, in those days, you couldn't charge your phone on the train you had to give it to the guard so I gave my phone to the guard and I was like if it rings in the middle of the night it's my brother-in-law my sister's having a baby she hasn't had it yet come wake me up I wake up the next morning no sign of the baby my brother-in-law picks me up at the station drives me to hospital no sign of the baby no sign it was one of these things called a weather bomb and we walked around um a, a town outside Edinburgh where my sister's having a baby which is in that weather quite <laughs> intense um, at Livingston, which you don't want to be in Livingston in December in a weather bomb, let's put it that way. And um, no baby, no baby, no baby. And I knew I had to leave that night because I had work the next morning. And um, uh, I um, thought, oh, it's never going to happen. Anyway, I went to the gift shop and I bought a lot of magazines for my sister and all this stuff. And the, I also bought a nail file because I'd bitten my nails to the oh. quick. And I had it in this hand. I paid for these magazines, didn't pay for the nail file. The lady in the shop said, are you going to pay for that nail file? And I said, I'm so sorry. I'm so distracted. She said, don't worry, love. Is this your first grandchild? <laughs> no. <laughs> my sister, my sister, who was standing next to me, made this noise, the like of which I've never heard before. She left the shop, stood there literally laughing, 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 laughing. And 45 minutes later, she gave birth to my niece, Coco. And it was definitely that child was laughed at. <laughs> Mind you, I mean, my mum was only 22 when she had me. You know, I, I often think I've almost skipped a generation. If I have mine a bit later. <laughs> it, it could have been that. I was a little bit <laughs> Anyway, the next night I got back, I went back to London having seen the, I was there when Coco was born. It was amazing. Got back to London and the next night I was at this Homestart Carol service. And I thought to myself, imagine all the different scenarios in which it could unravel for my sister and her little family. And it's not hard to go from the birth of a baby in really good circumstances to really struggling and it's not it's such a small mm. small distance between happiness and really struggling and and needing help because just one thing can go wrong yeah it's you know and I just think what Homestart does is just they just tell you someone's there and it's just that that's as well as all the rest of the things that they do but just letting people know that they're not alone can mean the world yeah. And just yeah. go, what do you need? You know, that's wonderful. And that's what yeah. the Home Start volunteers do. They just bring this kind of oasis of calm and sometimes a bit of parenting experience, which is always really useful. And and just sometimes just someone to to say, oh, God, sit with and have a cup of tea. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now, we've got messages coming in. Um, uh, Kerry has sent in a picture of a beautiful bouquet of paper flowers. Oh, really? um, uh, 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 images are below now so we can't see what's going on okay. so it's just you and I we can see but all sorts of things uh, so we are currently showing some images on YouTube of pictures people have sent in I love the pictures that people sent in um, Rashmi said it is me <laughs> oh, um, uh, and it's now Anita says um, can we ask Jane to show us some other ideas to inspire people yes we can Right, okie doke, Jane. So okay. I'm going to zip okay. it, zip it. Let's see what you got. Well, so I just, I've just got a pile of things. So obviously, 
the robin but um i wrote so the first book that i wrote which is now out of print i think it's called simply needlefell and um that was the book that i was doing all these different things from and this oh, let me just show you so this is the kind of thing that i do make kind of abstract pictures and use needle felting in totally different ways so this is kind of you know geometric just felt shapes on what is this background i think it's like a kind of flannel and then this is antique lace that i've woven wool through i really like using quite different combinations so lace with wool and so oh, yeah. things that that is absolutely beautiful um we are five minutes 10 minutes drive from honiton yeah. obviously home Honiton lace and uh, there's a lovely antique shop here called Fountain Antiques which is going to be opening again soon and um you see that beautiful uh, baby blanket from do you remember oh god that's such a long time ago My yes goodness, it was so lovely and it's, it's so unexpected it's it's, it's my it is my favorite place there's so much great yeah. stuff there yeah and they have they have these drawers at the at one of the little sections is different sections have these drawers and they have lace but can i see that picture again jane because that's beautiful so what have you you I have, have taken the lace, of lace and you have so, woven wool through the lace and then i needle felted it because needle felting is a bit like a glue it because it's meshing fibers together I didn't have to sew this lace on. I just punched this through and then it adhered to the fabric on the back. So there's this kind of idea that you can kind of almost embroider with needle felting, which is kind of my first love, I suppose. That's, that was always the machine that I used. And the, how I came about doing needle felting was because um, I was introduced to an embellisher machine, which is basically this needle felting tool motor. I got when I, we first met. Yes, yes. Yeah. Still um, got it. It's in the, it's we, in the craft room. So, so it's just like a sort of sewing machine that does this with no bobbin and no thread. And um, and then I was like, well, I need to have a hand tool to play with because so so then I found this, and so then I was literally um, embellishing fabric with sort of. So this is something that I made for a book that I wrote with Rachel Henderson. So it's this book. Um, so, so, I felt so crazy colourful because Rachel's really colourful with what yeah. she does. So, so yeah, so these are like, they're these flowers that I just picked apart and then put a little bit of needle felting in the centre so that they're glued on with needle felting. No so threading needle. Is that a silk flower or a dried flower? It's a silk flower. It's just, yeah, it's just one it's of the a, it's flowers. It's a silk hydrangea that you can silk, <laughs> yeah, you can silk hydrangea. Yeah. And that you could get in the pan shop. And that is that is absolutely beautiful. I'm just imagining that people the have to the and they're gonna sort of take them apart. <laughs> what is the yellow, the loss in shape? The oh this. It's yeah. just felt, just felt. So I, this just felt, felted on. And then these are just all the little flowers and then just a little bit of so, felting in, so the, in the centre. With the flowers, you did a little bit of needle felting in the centre to yeah. adhere. So a little bit of fleece. Them. So I just used this. So I got the flower. Oh, hang on. So and Jen, then, will you just touch the flower that's on your picture with your finger? Because then I think maybe I'm just the blindest person in the world. Yes, that's it. Brilliant. So yeah. they still have that that 3D. That is just yeah. so clever. And you can do that with any silk flowers that you picked up anywhere. Well, you can do it but with anything that doesn't need a felt because you can just sort of glue it into the middle with a ball of roving. That's just so, so Or a little bit of wool. So that wool is it's like, so because cool. wool just felts, you know, you can just use that to glue it on. So, yeah, there's just... So it's more sort of 2D what I'm doing. I'm just going to sort of show you something else. Um, so look, that's the little edging. But you could sort of do that on the edge of clothes. It's, that's me just hand stitching. Did it. you needle, did you stitch those and then blurred and then you them? You it, yeah. That's really so interesting. If so you I, had a large needle. You, so yeah. let's, say that was a, let's say that was a jacket and you wanted to give it that kind of chanel boucle yeah. feel. Um, and so what you would do is you take a large needle, 
some yarn, uh, anything big that, stitching, yeah, yeah, with wool, big, big stitching. You you'd make those little shapes, mm -hmm. and then what you do is you use the needle felt tool to sort of. The yeah. only word I can think of is blur, but it does blur it, it does doesn't blur it? Blur it, but it also makes it so that it, it wouldn't catch. It yeah. kind of just it yeah. meshes it, I guess, yeah. to the back of the fabric. So, and then also like the back. Hang on. So if I show you like this one, that's me also hand stitching, but I hand stitch some of my decoration on the front and then some on the back. So when I blurred it, then you can see it come through. So it's got this hazy effect where it's kind of punched through. So it's fascinating. I just love like a really simple technique and seeing how much I can, how far I can push it. It's just... It, it, I, I do love it. I mean, I always say I come back to it and I can feel, I hope it shows in my face, uh, there's a sort of like a catch in my throat when I see anything that's needle felted. It's the, it's that simplicity. Yes. Of, but it's of, also because you know how to do it. You know the secret of it, I guess. Well, I mean, I know that it pulls in and goes out. Now, we've got we've got some other messages. Um, uh, so... Um, uh, I think lockdown has given people a new appreciation for crafts with no access to shops. People are valuing the smaller things and learning not to rely on shops for everything. I have to say, I think that's a very good point. Um, Mrs. and Mrs. Frith. Mrs. and Mrs. Frith, who I think for the last two nights I have been reading out as Mr. and Mrs. Frith. <laughs> I think it's that when I watched the episode. <laughs> I, have been, I have been, I have been, I have, these glasses need redoing. So I'm so sorry, Mrs. and Mrs. Frith. I've been reading you out as Mr. and Mrs. Frith. Is there a special trick to not, aha, uh -huh. seriously, this is this is an important question. Okay. Is there a special trick to not snapping the needles? We tried it and tried to stay upright, but the needles snapped often. Jane, over to you. Okay, so the needles are really, really, really sharp but they are really delicate. And I think the trick that I do is if you, if you're a sewer and you know, you're kind of, when you take your jeans up and you fold the denim over too many times, and then you're kind of putting it through your machine and you're going, Ooh, is it going to go? Is it going to go? And the, I think the trick is when you kind of put, put, if I kind of just show you, so if I'm going to be punching like this, it's just to go, out and then you know so it was just buy a spare packet I think um ah uh, it's easy for children no. yeah. yes you're seeing that is is yeah. is needle felty easy for children to try yeah now I'm gonna answer this and Jane is gonna answer this <laughs> okay because <laughs> I think I think we might say the same but just in case I have I've I live in quite a boy world. I was brought up as one of three girls and a boy. And so in a very girly world, not kind of pink, but, you know, my dad was in the art world, my brother's in the art world. There, there was a lot of painting of pictures and things. So I was quite shocked when I found myself in a very sort of let's set fire to things, let's blow things up, let's melt metal, let's, you know, let's do everything we can every day to set off the fire alarm type world in which I now live. But I have felt that needle felting <laughs> particularly appeals. Uh, there's something, i I got to say it, about the stabbing motion and yeah. the risk factor, which yeah. hugely yeah. appeals to the boys. Um, so would I, I, my answer is, is yes, needle felting is easy for children to try in my personal experience. But also, uh, you do have to accept that some blood <laughs> But it's actually a really good one to, to get, particularly in my case. I don't want to gender stereotype, but in my case, it's been particularly good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jane, sorry. It's, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. yeah, it is good for children. They have to be quite supervised. Yeah. Yes. 
you know, and we'll use it on each other. Yeah. <laughs> Because those needles are sharp and they have got barbs in them. So if you do stab yourself, it's not even like stabbing yourself with a needle. It's like, ooh, because it's that barb, it's you've got to take it out and it's going to cling on to your yeah. finger. Yeah. So, yeah, I kind of say um, different kids, I suppose. You know, my, my daughter's a real tomboy, you know, so she, yeah, she likes it as well. But, um, yeah, I think I think it's just you've really got to sort of make sure that you tell them exactly how it works. You yes. Know, and have to, they have to concentrate and do yeah. watch them. Not playing. a to do while watching telly. No, it's, it's, <laughs> so it's a great one for a podcast or a bit of Radio 4. Yeah. But no, don't, don't start needle crafting while watching telly because you will just find you just you'll get caught by something on, you know, I don't know, Foil's War and you're away, you know, ow. Um, so, uh, so Carol, I hope that answers the question. Um, uh, oh, hmm, I don't know. Chloe has asked, can you get special protection gloves as it can hurt if you poke your fingers? Mm -hmm. Yes, you can. So you can get like leather little finger things. So more for, um, you know, we were talking about at the start, if you're doing um, 3D things like, you know, Steffi does at the Makers, you know, mm -hmm. they, they use just a single needle and you're almost more likely to stab yourself than this because this, this has got yes, some yes. kind of protection. So they use like the leather things for when you're doing sort of 3D needle felting. But I guess you could. But I think I've never really stabbed. The yeah, only time I've stabbed myself was this, when, is when I've tried to make a 3D object with this. Like, you know, just like trying to make a bauble and just being impatient yeah. and going, no. I'll use five needles instead of the one and then... Sort of yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I, I've used obviously both tools, and I've worked with both mediums. What, what you know, the sort of what I might call the applique medium, which we we've been talking about, and then the three D medium. Yeah. I, I, I must admit, I love the 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 single needle, and I and I love the way it sort of comes together. And I haven't ever stabbed myself, and I haven't used protective oh, that's cool. gloves. Mm -hmm. But you know, touch wood. <laughs> Don't want anyone coming back to me. Just to, you know. <laughs> but, it, but this is coming from the woman. This is coming from the woman viewers who has a very large scar on her finger um, as a result of trying to make, uh, you know, potato dauphinoise with a mandolin. So I am not the right person to. Oh, ask. I don't think I could even own a mandolin because uh, no. just the sound of the word mandolin makes me go. Uh, no, no. <laughs> so, um, so Chloe. Uh, Oh my God. No, that's not true. No, sorry. We need to think about wrapping up. No, go away. No, no, we can't. No way. We have not. <laughs> um, We're uh, really excited. <laughs> Leaf Jet Camp says the makers, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. Steffi told me to watch tonight. Steffi was the, Steffi was the one that coined me the Robin lady because I walked into her shop and she said, and I told her, we were just talking and I was sort of going, oh, you know, I, I did the Robin on Kirsten. She went, oh, what? You're the Robin lady. And I think before, so before the Robin episode came out, people didn't know what needle felting really was. I didn't. I didn't. You no, know, it was, I was trying to like run workshops and people were like, well, what is that? And Steffi was running a shop going, fluff, fluff, use the fluff. And they'd be like, what for? And then so she said to me that me kept coming on and teaching you that. It just suddenly everyone knew what it was, which was <laughs> wonderful. It was great. And, which and so I love the needle felting photo me. I love the needle felting animals. There are some incredibly clever people who do needle felting every breed of dog. <sighs> and it's so specific. It blows my mind what they do. Blows I'm what a kind of figurative crafter. I'm abstract. I well, I think I'm more of a weaver actually, but you yeah. know, but I see what they do and I'm like, wow. They can do like Border Terrier, Fox yeah. Terrier, Patterdale, you know, they would <laughs> completely be able to do it. Now, I, 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 I feel that because both of us are passionate about Homestart, I, I, I want to make sure that we've absolutely talked about it and properly highlighted that there is the Just Giving page, which is really important. If, if anybody's enjoyed our chat, enjoyed 
seeing Jane in her home environment, which is a real treat, um, and just just feels that if I if if Jane says it's a good thing and I say it's a good thing, there's a, probably a strong chance that Home Start is where you should be putting any spare money you've got at the moment, because they really. Um, uh, um, uh, oh look, Mrs. and Mrs. Frith. I feel so awful about this. Um, would we were definitely introduced to needle felting through your show? See, oh, there, we, there we are. Um, and Katrina Vernon says yes, and me. I bought my first needle felting kit after seeing it on your show. You see, Jane. Wonderful. You converted an entire <laughs> nation. Uh, does Jane have any top tips for crafting together with children whilst we're all stuck at home? Um. <laughs> Yeah, just get just get them involved, I guess. Um, it's I do a lot of like looking on Pinterest for like interesting things to do. Yeah, the great thing about doing this YouTube rather than being on the telly is I don't have to worry about saying brands. Pinterest rocks. Yeah. Pinterest does really rock. I've got a whole a whole thing what they board called to do, and I kind of look at all those things. Yeah. Also, I kind of. Think about things that you quite like to do and then simplify them and do them with it, with them. I, I want to do kind of some abstract painting and then chop it up and make it into a collage. That's next on the list. I'm going to be like, kids, come on, let's like paint with sticks and just have some fun. And there's all sorts of things. The weirdest thing happened to me today. This afternoon, I decided to have a clean of the fridge. And I found some yogurt at the back of the fridge. I promise you, <laughs> you've never seen anything like it. And Oscar was like, oh, my God, what is that? And I'm like, it's just some yogurt that's gone off it's at the back of the fridge and it was literally green and it had the scum on the top and and it's extraordinary with the kind of homeschooling stuff even the most negative things can and we started really discussing yeah, rocks yeah, and yeah. fungi and then I'm, I'm ashamed to say I found a pack of mushrooms which had gone amiss and they were in a kind of hidden under a basket and it, and I thought the smell was coming out of the fridge, but it turned out it was coming out from the <laughs> mushrooms. Oh, but you know, well, that's cheaper than a new fridge. <laughs> cheaper than a new fridge, and our fridge, it was secondhand when we got it, and we've got this kind of box built around it because it was one of those ones where it was supposed to be part of a fitted kitchen that wasn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So our fridge is not allowed to die ever <laughs> because you'd have to completely rebuild the box. Um, but it is that thing with the with the kids is actually. With anything, crafting, cooking, baking, you know, even something like cleaning out the fridge, they are interested. Yeah. And if you let go and let them try something and see something and 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 just, you know, just I mean, stupid thing, like if, if there's a piece of clothing that the children have grown out of, let them cut it up to see how it's made. Mm. Looking at the seams, looking at the labels you know doing a bit of research about where cotton comes from where elastin comes from all of these things is an entire day of homeschooling or even like Eva was just putting like some rice in a sock and she was like she's obsessed with it. she wants a weighted blanket so she like puts marbles in things and she's like look <laughs> now it's weighted yes she kind of just experiments and invents and I think you've almost got to be prepared for a bit of mess yeah let them make a bit of mess yeah I'm and saying I, that. I'm like, stop making a mess. <laughs> and, but yeah, yeah. It is that. It is that. Um, it's difficult, but we had um, a really good fun actually with Zena. Zena did a brilliant thing, and I just I put this next to it. You can't really see it, but it's kind of like a marbled stone. But um, we painted all these stones white, and Zena did this thing where she just had a tray of water, and she and she put all. We've all got like loads of old nail varnish. Oh, oh nail, nail varnish, and put nail varnish in the water, and then we were marbling with the. It sank. We had to have the door open. Literally, but we were putting literally. like pebble, pebbles in there and like marbling things and pots and stuff, you know, and just yeah, just trying to find yeah. things that we have the stuff for or use up the stuff if that we normally put throw recycled out. Crafts into mm. Pinterest. I bet you'd loads of stuff. Yeah. Uh, Katrina says, I did potato printing with my 18-month-old and she loved it, but she did get covered in paint, but it was great fun. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm a bit of a neat freak and, I, you know, I like things to be just so, and I have had to let... Oh, now, you know what? Now we are... Oh, got to get <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Everyone, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for supporting Home Start. Get to know your local Home Start. Make a donation on the Just Giving page. Think about how... Homestart, you could help Homestart because help 
Home Start is helping other people. Jane, you're a joy. Thank you for saying yes. Um, thank you for oh, being no. you <laughs> and being so brilliant. It's just a really nice thing to do. And I'm really grateful to you. And I know that we will see you in person. We will see each other in person at, again soon because we always do. But um, yeah. yeah, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> night, night and loads of love.